Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of First Reaction Fan Reaction. I'm your host, Dara Whitman, and here with me is my lovely co-host, Kaylin Cluley. All right, Kaylin. Yes. We're still watching Orphan Black. Yes, we are. We're still on season four. We are indeed. And today we are going to be discussing season four, episode three, The Stigma of Progress, and episode four, From Instinct to Rational Control. That's a lot of words. Everything's fine. Yes. Guys, everything's not fine. Everything, there's so many things happening. There's a lot. Uh, if you guys remember, Sarah's got a bot, maggot bot in her cheek. Yeah, what's up with that? Well, we, and we find out more about them in these two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, Allison's doing her thing. Helena's still pregnant. Casino's yeah. getting sicker and doing science stuff. Yeah, so your standard. Rachel's in a somewhere. She's somewhere. We don't know where. Oh, let's actually talk about Rachel first. Because, like, everybody else is kind of, like, their plots are are interlocking. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about her first. So she's wherever she is, and uh, she's getting her eye, like, they're, like, testing her eye. Yeah. Somebody specific, uh, his name is Ira, and he kind of looks like some men we've seen before. Yeah, he's a caster clone. He's a caster clone. Uh, Impressions of that? I I just wasn't expecting to see a caster clone. I mean, I guess, I don't know, like, well, like, that actor's been there since, like, season two, and I wonder if they just kind of felt, that, like, like they don't feel like letting him go, so they're just, like... <laughs> just keeping him around. He did play a clone. Let's just say one of them was, like, they, let's just say Susan ha- kept one of them. Yeah. Which is fine. Like, yeah. it's all right. It gives, some, it gives the actor something to do. Yeah. He's a good actor. Yeah, and, and it's nice to see that the caster plot isn't completely 100% wrapped up. Like, it does have its lingerings. Yeah. So, which is nice. Also, Charlotte's there, and uh, they're kind of ha- they're kind of bonding mm-hmm. a bit. I don't know if it's like a mother daughter bond, but definitely like a buddy bond. Yeah, yeah. This poor kid. Oh, this this kid does not deserve the crap they're getting put through. And then uh, Susan comes back, and uh, Rachel kind of concludes that uh, they were trying to find Kendall Malone, and they failed miserably. Yes. Susan also actually reveals that uh, Charlotte was actually cloned from Rachel. They they bring up the metaphor of Adam's rib. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, if you don't know what that is, read the Bible. You just <laughs> just or, pop it open. It, you can find it at any hotel room. Just open it up and give it a Or read. if you want more fun, then probably uh, if you can look it up, watch the musical Children of Eden, because that is a lovely musical. I've never seen it. They, my high school did it, I think, like two years before I went there. And it's like, oh, really? Well, the, yeah, and the plot is the first half is, uh, the first act is Adam and Eve, and uh, their whole story, and then the second act of Noah's Ark, and it's uh, by it's Stephen Schwartz who did Wicked. It's really good music. Oh, nice! Highly recommend. Good to know. Yep, and uh, we get we kind of can learn more about Susan a bit. She's uh, kind of a bitch. Yeah, we see where Rachel gets it from. <laughs> well, not really, because she didn't raise her. Yeah, but a little bit. A little bit. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Also, and then we get to Rachel and Charlotte are painting uh, something, and they're just talking about stuff, and uh, they're like. Rachel's trying to get some word out, and she knows that uh, Charlotte has a computer and access to the internet to mm-hmm. take classes. Mm-hmm. So they're so Charlotte's helping her out to get a message out, and they're doing yes. it secretly. Yes. And then at one point, Charlotte starts coughing, and there's blood. There's blood, and she's like, "Oh yeah, it happens sometimes." And it's like, "That's not a good thing." No, that's so. not a good thing, small child. You're not supposed so, to be coughing up well, blood. So, so yeah, so we bring up the fact that Charlotte's step is sick, and she's like the youngest one because they. Because, like, it starts off in the uterus, so, like, yeah. it kind of seems weird that, like, this kid is starting to show signs. Like, already. Yeah. yeah. So that's Rachel. Mm-hmm. Do we care? Well, I mean... I, I, yeah, a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Not all of the bit, but definitely, like, Some a little of bit. bit. All right, meanwhile, um... Okay, so then everybody else's storyline kind of, like, intersects in one way or another. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's go to Sarah. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh... Let's, because, uh, well, basically she goes down to the lab and Kazima and Scott are trying to, like, figure out what the bot is and it's, like, yeah. connected to her. Yeah. So that's not good. No, it's, like, latched itself in there. Um, also, uh, they got the one guy is um, watching Kira. And Kira's kind of out of it a bit. Something's up with Kira. Mm-hmm. That's why she just kind of, like, dumps this, like, game. Like, they're playing a game and they just kind of dump it. But I kind of 
took that as either like a like she looks exhausted yeah and b she knows like she's like oh she's a smart kid like she knows something's up and just nobody's telling her and it's yeah it's kind of mad yeah she's like what's with this nobody ever tells me nothing and like her mom's not really spending time with her and, like sarah i think sarah acts and does like a lot of stuff in these two episodes that's like not very like nice yeah but she's, she's like under a lot of yeah but duress. Like, to be fair she's got a bot thing that like she's seen kill somebody yeah in her cheek mm-hmm. like all right, I'm gonna. We're gonna forgive her. Yeah, she's not like being like a horrible. She's not being a horrible person. It's just kind of like there's a lot going on and it's scary. Yeah, yeah, totally. So Kasim has got to want to. They want to figure out like what it can do, but like they can't. Mm-hmm. Like they they want an actual bot. Yeah, and they can't use the one in Sarah's cheek because if they take it out, they don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and because she her. could die, especially like that video they saw where like somebody nicked it and then it exploded. So they uh so they uh Kasima. Uh, well, they call Allison to maybe see, like, she has one in her cheek as well, mm-hmm. just to be safe, and she doesn't. Yeah. And then they tell her the whole situation, and then Allison says, like, so if you've had a bot... So if you, yeah, if we knew, like, a Neolution is just hanging around... Or underground... Yeah, somewhere. Would you be able to use it? And they were like, oh, but that would be fantastic, actually. Mm-hmm. And Allison's like, okay. So, we're gonna dig up Dr. Leakey. If you remember... Donnie killed him. Yes. And he's buried in the garage. Yeah. Yeah, he's, they, have, they put cement over it and everything, so it's going to take a little bit to, to dig him back out. So they're going to so they're gonna dig him back up and see if he had one of those things implanted in him and then get it. Yeah. And then give it to them to, you know, test and figure it out what it is. Yeah. So fun time. So that's basically what Allison does most of the time. Yep. It's, it's time to exhume my body. Hooray. Meanwhile, uh, they get Helena to watch the kids, and she's just eating away. Yep. Eating all of the food. Out of house and home. Yep. And uh, Sarah is also just uh, searching. Uh, she wants to find the guy who gave her the information, or the gave her the video, mm-hmm. whose name is Dizzy, because she wants to find MK. And so, but he's, like, really suspicious, so, like, she just says, like, oh, I'm her sister, and I didn't know who she was. Yeah. And, like, also says, like, I've got one of these things in my jaw. Help. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay. And yeah, he's a little intrigued by that. Yeah. And he's, because he, like, has, like, because people had theories about, like, what it was. And some people thought, like, it was for insulin thing or just kind of, like. Yeah, it, like, a way to, like, smuggle or. Yeah, but he is the thing. is like, well, if you wanted to smuggle something or if it was, like, a drug, like, it's, like, using thing, why would you put it in the jaw? Yeah. So his thing is because it's close, because, like, the stems are closer to the brain. Right. And you're just like, oh, no. In case you need to get to the brain for something. Like killing someone. Oh no! And then they know that. They're not good. So then we found out the person, the name of the guy in the video whose cheek got exploded. Yeah, his name is Alonso Martinez. Yes. And uh, Art decides to go like search that while yeah. he's also watching. Look up some info on him. Yes. So that's the thing. Um, meanwhile, also uh, to back to Casima, Mrs. S is trying to find a doctor to help get it removed. So she goes out, and Casima is asked to watch Kira. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kira's, like, is also, like, she's kind of, like, daydreaming about, and she's exhausted, but she has, like, a thing where uh, she said the sisters had to burn Sarah because she was changing. Yeah, which is suspicious. Well, if you think about the next episode and when we find out about the bots. It makes a lot of sense. It does. The weird psychic child. She looks, she, Not the first time she's done some weird psychic stuff. She'll have some buddies soon, though, if you think about it. Yeah. Okay. Who else? What other clone is pregnant? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that's what you were getting at. Think about it. I mean, why Why not? I mean, buddies could come in any form. They don't have to come in the form of babies. I meant, like, buddies who can relate. <laughs> anyway. Actually, so that's kind of that. And meanwhile, Allison and Donnie are still trying to dig up the body. And uh, Helena's being Helena. She, yeah. at one point, calls Sarah because they haven't talked for a while and tells her about the twins. Yeah. And then uh, some homicide detectives show up. Yeah, asking about uh, the three Portuguese folks who were murdered in a warehouse. Aww. Because apparently nobody cleaned that up very well or something. I don't know. Uh, apparently not. Anyway, well, then, uh, so, so Helena's trying to figure that out. Or, like, help out with that, at least. And then uh, Donnie comes in on accident and uh, sees this and is like, oh, no. And then, like, because, like, you know, there's a problem when you got homicide detectives and you're digging up a body. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when the person answering the door is uh, Helena. Yes. <laughs> so, 
you know, we, so Donnie kind of has, they ask, like, if Donnie, the homicide detectives ask if Donnie can just, like, stay and, like, also be questioned. So, Alice, so, so then Donnie like, says, like, let me go clean up. And then he goes to uh, Alice and tells him, like, we're screwed. <laughs> and then she's like, no, go in there. I will clean. You go do the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're answering questions. And I love the thing because they have a bloody, like, thing for that says Allison school trustee. And I was like, oh, they were supporters. <laughs> that makes it doubly tragic. <laughs> Which is so funny. Yeah. And uh, so then they just talk to them and uh, they end up passing, I think, maybe. Mm-hmm. Who knows? So then, and then the homicide detectives leave. I don't know if they think that, like, they're off. I don't know if they're off the hook, off the hook. I don't know. But, like, it will. The great part is when they're like, oh, like, then who else was working on your campaign? And then, like, they tell Dolly not to answer, and, and Helena has to answer, and she just, like, rattles off all the names. I'm like, that's so good. Well, I'm wondering if those are, like, if those are like the names of the actual people, or they. I think so. Was she just like, what? Because, like, one of them sounded like Carol Lombard, and I'm like, that's an actress. <laughs> like, a real, like, an actress from, like. Hey, more than one person can have a name. I know, but Carol Lombard's, like, a famous actress from, like, the 40s. <laughs> so that's why I was like, are she just naming actresses, or that, like, I mean, okay. Anyway, so then that happens, and then they dig up the body. They mm-hmm. get the head, at least, and they notice that, uh, they find, like, something is, like, there's, like, a hole in Dr. Leakey's cheek. Mm hmm. So it looks like something's there, and then they have to the be, uh, the best part. They have to tell Cosima how they got this. Oh my god! Yep, they had to come clean and about so the fact that they killed Doctor Leakey. And I just like the best. So they tell they say like, oh yeah, like I accidentally shot Doctor Leakey, and then we buried him in the garage, and he has one of those things. So if you want it, come and get it. Yeah, it's, and it's your job. Just a look on Cosima's face, though. She's just like, she's like, you killed Doctor Leakey. What? <laughs> and then they're like, like look, we can discuss this later, but like, do you want it? And she's just like. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. So that happened. Oh, my God. And yes. Uh, all right. And then uh, going back to Sarah, uh, Art has tracked Alonzo Martinez because he was, like, flying back and forth to places. Mm-hmm. Tracked him to a dental clinic that uh, specific is uh, does, like, implants, mm-hmm. which, you know, implants in mouth sounds, like, fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love going to the dentist so they can put weird things in my mouth. I mean, I don't hate the dentist, but, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Although I did, I remember, because I was thinking, because I'm like, is, is that, like, actual thing? But then I do remember, like, when I went to Girl Scout camp, there was one of the counselors had a pierced tooth. Ooh. Why like would you on, do her, that? on like her front tooth, and it was clearly like an earring. Yeah, well, like they pierced right through the tooth. I don't know. I think I asked her, but I don't remember what she said because I was like eleven. They shouldn't do it right through the tooth. That's, well, that's she was that's from fin- she was from Finland. That so, doesn't like, grow think- back. No, no, no. Like it looked the tooth. The tooth looked fine, except for like the little thing there. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it was a fake. It might have been a fake one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't like that. Well, anyway. I don't think a dentist would advocate for that. Look, we got to keep track on this episode compared to Four the last one. Four out of five one. dentists say no way in hell. Anyway, so then we go to the clinic. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, Sarah's trying to walk around. And uh, like, it takes you out, but she takes off the hood because, like, you don't want to look conspicuous. Yeah. And then one of the hygienists comes back and is like, Beth. So you're like, okay. So Beth was here. Yeah. Beth was on the same kind of route. Yeah. And uh, basically explains that, like, I've got this in my mouth, and uh, she says I know how to remove it. Mm-hmm. And, like, were you trusting her? Mm-hmm. No, were you trusting the hygienist? No. No? Uh, and actually, at first I was like, oh, maybe she knows. But then as we go on, I'm like, ooh, I don't like this girl. Well, it kind of sounds like she signed up for this job, and then they were doing this stuff, and she was like, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah, she sounded like she didn't really want to be a part of that. All that right, so then uh, she tries to help her get it removed. And um, says that if uh, she says like she like hit it, and that if anybody if she makes a movement, then uh, a, a toxin will you know disperse, and then she'll die. Mm-hmm. And then you find out that she actually thinks this is actually really cool, and it's actually like you know neolutionist. Yeah, and that she called her superiors and thinks that Sarah's really lucky, or yeah. Beth, Sarah, Beth, whatever. You've been chosen. Oh. And then somebody comes in and. Uh, Cuts the throat. Turns out it's uh, Ferdinand. Yeah. So Mrs. S had actually was like trying to find trying to find the doctor, and then Ferdinand gets in contact with them because like realizing yeah. that what they were trying to do, and also got Rachel's message. Yeah. And basically says like, "What's going on? Like, can we can I help or something?" Mm-hmm. And uh, kills the hygienist. Yeah, that was fun. 
Just straight up like, ching, blah, blood everywhere. And uh, says he got a message from Rachel and that Susan Duncan is alive. Mm-hmm. So that happened. Yeah. Opinions? No. A lot. Yeah. Just a lot happening. But uh, I don't know. That's interesting. I think we'll talk more about Fernando's character. I think as the, the episodes go on. But like, anytime he's like around, he always seems such like a weird kind of dude. And I'm, But I'm always like interested to see what he's going to do next. Like he's really not a good guy, but he's just kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm so like intrigued by his character because he's, he's kind of fun. But like not a good guy. But like it's done in such a way where like I don't think we really s- – is. Not a way that I see a lot in, like, how characters are handled as far as, like, being not good but also kind of entertaining. So, yeah. like, that's why I'm always, like, intrigued when he comes on because I just don't know what he's going to do. He's kind of, like, a, um, a loose cannon in that way. I, sh- I don't know if you've ever seen Where the Heart is. I should show you in that. Like, you should see him in that movie, though. Oh, yeah? Because he's just so adorable. Oh, really? Well, he's, like, the good guy. Oh, uh, okay. And he's, like, well, he's, like, he's the good guy. It's such, like, love interest. And, like, mm-hmm. there's a couple points when he's, like, a dick. But, like, overall, he's supposed to be, like, the good guy. Yeah. And also, because I think the movie came out, like, the early 2000s. So he's, like, a baby. It's, like, and, like, Aww. semi-baby Natalie Portman. Oh. It's adorable. Little. It's not a good movie because, like... I think it's, like, based off a book, and they didn't know how to cut out plot points. Oh, okay. So, like, there's, like, plot points, and I'm just like, what's the point of this? Yeah. But, like, it's cute. Yeah. It's a right. fine little, like, rainy day glass of wine movie. Anyway, so nice. uh, that's that's it for that episode. So we're going to take a break, and then Ooh. when we come back, we will discuss the next episode. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about episode four now. And uh, stuff happened. Things definitely happened. Yes. Yeah, so, Boy, howdy, did they happen. Uh, we, I think we mainly learned a lot about MK. Yeah, this, is, this was definitely a very, like, MK-heavy episode. It was. I'm, tr- I'm trying to wonder. I guess Sarah did, like, a good amount. She's, like, doing... She, like, we don't, like, get, like, a lot of character with Sarah in these couple episodes, but she's mm-hmm. doing a lot of t- detective work. Yeah. But, um... Let's go, actually, no, we're going to do Rachel again first, just because, again, she's, like, kind of out of it, like, mm-hmm. out of what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. Rachel's just, like, doing her own thing, and they need to make a decision, because, like, they know that she's got this disease, so they need to figure out what they want to do. Mm-hmm. They want, they kind of want to do uh, immunosuppressants. Yeah. Like, they did with Jennifer, but, like, that was kind of torture. It didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work for Jennifer. The thing with Charlotte, though, is that Charlotte hasn't hit puberty yet, so it might work. Yeah, something about with hormones, and it could be different. And uh, Susan kind of all suggests that, like, she's the youngest one to exhibit symptoms. Why don't we just, you know, let the disease kill her and, like, her data is actually going to be really useful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mother of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great paternal figure right there. And says that Rachel gets to make the decision. And also mm-hmm. Rachel gives her another message. Ra- gives Charlie another message. She gives to Ferdinand. Yeah, she kind of sneaks it. Badly. Yeah, she, yeah. Because Susan's like right there. I'm like, no, no, you do that when you guys are alone. Yeah, seriously. Or like alone. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Rachel kind of says, we shouldn't treat her. I don't know if, I don't know if she's doing that like, because like she felt, generally felt that way or like just to, I don't know, like for, because she has another plan. Hmm. But then also, I think it was, she had another plan, but then Susan reveals that like, she knows that she was contacting Ferdinand. Yeah. That's why. So. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Okay. Anyway, let's go to talk to Sarah for a second. Um, so they get back to this like other safe house with Ferdinand, and uh, Ferdinand wants to get Rachel out and says like he'll help them find a doctor, and uh, basically he'll help them find a doctor who can remove the thing because mm-hmm. this is Nuggets alive. But they need Sarah's contact. They need MK. Yeah. So that they can, like, trace her and then also get Rachel. And everybody wins. Yeah. And it's adorable how much he cares about Rachel. It, yeah, I guess. He's kind of, he's, he's still, like, we saw him, like, previous season. He, he's a little bit of a skeeve. He's kind of skeevy. Like, he really cares about Rachel. So they're perfect for each other. But also he's, like, kind of a skeevy. Yeah, they're both a little freaky. They're perfect for each other. Yeah. But, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Because it's like, oh, he cares about her. But also, oh, this guy's a weirdo. Yeah, he is. Anyway. So that's that. So Sarah's going to basically try to talk to MK and get her mm-hmm. to trace this thing. And then 
So that's basically to keep her safe, and then they would be able to find a doctor. Mm-hmm. So he goes to Dizzy's because they want to do, like, the contact thing. And Sarah's like, mm-hmm. trace this for me. And then, if, like, and, like, uh, and she says, or give me the information. He's like, if we do this, I want to meet in person. She's yeah. like, fine. So then she starts doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Allison's hanging out with her friend Sarah Stubbs. Yeah. Let's go to Allison for a bit. And, uh, like, coffee shop or something. Yes. And then a woman comes up to her and calls her Beth. Yeah. And it's uh, Trina from the uh, New Illusion. She didn't recognize it first. She looks different. She she lost the contact lens. Like, she's dressing in normal clothing. Yeah, and uh, not pregnant anymore, but doesn't bring up a baby and says something like, you knew I was a carrier. Mm-hmm. So, like, maybe she was a surrogate? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's, but, like, yeah, she's definitely, she says something about, like, she told Beth not to look deeper into it, but then she did. And, like, she brings up all this stuff that, like, nobody really knows what she's talking about. Well, she brings up, like, why'd you go back to the club? Why, like, and why'd you go to this fertility clinic, which we didn't know about? Right. And then Allison brings up that... And then we go back to Sarah, who's having, at this point, was having a, this is before the talking with MK, mm-hmm. was having a family discussion with, uh, oh, we forgot to bring this up. Last episode. So Felix has found his uh, Yeah, I know. I, like you said that, I was like, oh, wait, we forgot that whole subplot. Okay, so in the last episode, Felix found his sister, half-sister, yeah. technically. Yeah. Uh, whose name is Adele, and that's what they were, and that's what basically Sarah, Mrs. S, and Felix were discussing about, like, trying to... Bring her in, like this, like discussing like the fact that like this is it's fine with the fact that yeah uh, he's trying to find his yeah. family and like, uh, she's supportive of the whole idea. So uh, Adele, she seems nice. Yeah, she's a she's a disbarred lawyer, bit of a uh, lot, bit of a lush who really likes to drink. And is why do you think she got disbarred? A little bit of a floozy. I mean, Grant, like, look, she's got a nice, well balanced diet of vodka and gin. <laughs> Yeah, but like so, yeah. How the whole situation works is that they're half siblings. They're half. Like their father had. The, yeah, Felix's father was American, but he had an affair in England, and then yeah, and then apparently which resulted in baby. And apparently, the dad knew but didn't tell anybody. Yeah, until his deathbed. Yes. So that's that. Sorry, we forgot to mention that in the last episode. It is a little forgettable, but it is nice to see Felix find his sibling. And he says like, uh, like, and he's like, kind of doesn't care what people think, and then. But we have this, like, table discussion, and, like, Felix is, because uh, Felix was kind of mad at her, because she was kind of like, get your sister out, let's, let's go investigate. Mm-hmm. And then Felix was like, if you would have told me there was a bot in your cheek, I would have come. Mm-hmm. I'm not a monster. Yeah. But Sarah's kind of mad at him. Yeah. So, but anyway, so, and, like, Sarah even, like, yelled at Allison at one point, because they're discussing the fertility clinic. She's like, can you just, like, do something? Mm-hmm. And, like, again, she's being a bitch, but you kind of understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Allison and Felix and Donya are gonna uh, investigate this fertility clinic. <laughs> Just <Hooray. saying. laughs> so they're gonna do that. Sarah's continuing to try to get uh, this uh, this message traced that uh, to help out Ferdinand. Right. Uh, yeah, or Rachel is. Scott and Cosima have gotten Doctor Leakey's head, and they're gonna try to get and they're getting the bot out of uh, him mm-hmm. and to get, figure out what that does. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the setup for everything. Yeah. So uh, just. So then we'll just break down after that. So, well, first, I kind of, and then, like, Helena's just kind of around, like, she's making a collage mm-hmm. of stuff, and then we talk about the fertility thing, and Donnie brings up, like, how they, when they were trying, and the struggles. And yeah, it's, like, a really hard time for them. Uh, yeah, and Donnie gets all emotional. Mm-hmm. And that kind of gives, like, just a, a wrap up Helena's thing. So, uh, basically, Donnie just says, like, and try to be nice, but saying, like, you gotta tiptoe around Allison when it comes to this stuff, because mm-hmm. she's, you know... And then it uh, turns out that Helena's eggs that were not in her have died. Because she forgot to feed them liquid nitrogen. Did she have liquid nitrogen? They probably could have gotten some from like Home Depot or something. She didn't realize that. I, again, one, I don't think that was all of her eggs ever. Yeah, no, not, no, no, not like all the eggs in her ovaries or anything. Just like the ones that were fertilized. And she is currently pregnant, so you yeah. know. And then she buries it and then she decides to leave the Hendrix- Hendrixes. And we have no idea where she's going to go. Bye-bye. So long. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Allison, Donnie, and Felix go to the fertility clinic. Mm-hmm. And then Allison has made them both IDs. And Donnie's kind of like, wait, why aren't you coming in? And she's like, well, Beth's already been there. I can't go back in. Yeah. And then Donnie puts together like, oh, him and Felix are going to be the <laughs> couple. <laughs> and uh, we get Whitey trying to be gay. <laughs> Donnie, Donnie, who has never met a gay person in his life. Wow. 
<laughs> According to Felix. Besides Felix. Well, yeah. Ex- <laughs> I love the logic here. Where, where um, yeah, Felix is like, you ever have a gay friend in your life? And Donnie's like, well, no. And he's, Felix is like, well, wrong, because 5 to 10% <laughs> <laughs> of people you know are probably gay and he's like what no and felix is like yeah especially because thought he's trying to act like a stereotype and felix is like shut up <laughs> i th- well and like it's like and we like forgive donnie because he's so, he you know, he's just he's so sheltered <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't realize he doesn't it's fine oh, no. and they need samples from them yeah so that's fun <laughs> that's a hilarious scene that was a hilarious scene because they give him like because they assume he's gay so they give him gay porn and donnie's like oh oh yeah. no he's like i can't work with this anyway and then he has to call allison and be like can you help and then they do this whole like italian role play like yeah like and, airplane and mile high club and there's like that one song that's playing it was freaking hilarious. <laughs> that was a hilarious scene. I was losing. Uh, but as thing. he's calling her, actually, he notices one of their friends mm-hmm. at the fertility clinic, and she is like five or six months pregnant. And Allison brings up, like, I thought they stopped trying. We're talking about mm-hmm. talking to them about adoption. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of wondering if they could get more information out of her. So Allison like runs into like runs into her mm-hmm. and says like they've been trying again, and it's just not hasn't been working, and they're yeah. upset. Yeah. And uh, the woman says, "Ask for Doctor Bosch and talk and ask for the Brightborn treatment, yes. which they do." Mm-hmm. And so that happens. Yes, which and they get a nice little pamphlet on that. Hooray! It seems super secretive. And he's like, "How did you know about this?" They said from a very satisfied customer, which makes sense. Yeah, that works. That's a good cover. Uh, meanwhile, Kasima and um, Scott are getting the bot thing out of Doctor Leakey's. Uh, cheek because there's it made like a tumor mm-hmm. yeah which is weird well i think probably because he was dead so like it wasn't doing anything yeah so it was basically like feeding off his like and then they realized that it starts glowing yeah it's bioluminescent yay and then it goes in the dark we also learn uh they basically kind of figure out what it does which is basically kind of like messes with your dna and like changes yeah. it mm-hmm. which kind of says something about kira's vision which mm-hmm. yeah Maybe the psychic child is right after all. I don't get how, like, being born from a clone can make you psychic. Sometimes shit just happens. I get that it's science fiction, and, like, psychic can be, you can make that, anything with, like, mind stuff, like psychic yeah. or, like, telekine- telekinetic, you can make science fiction. Yeah. Or other stuff you can do with the mind, I don't know. Yeah. Like, other- basically, if you just suck it up, chalk it all up to, science did that, like, anything is science fiction. Well, I'm trying to think, what are their, like, mind powers? There's psychic, there's moving stuff with your mind, there's reading people's minds. Oh, yeah. Uh, clairvoyant, seeing the future. Oh, that's a psychic. Oh, yeah. Well, psychic, yeah. Well, psychic, I mean, is a, um, yeah, mind reading, um, telekinesis, uh, uh, ooh, making people see things. That's one. That's one. Telepath. Yeah, telepath. It was like that. What was that movie with uh, when Chris Evans was trying to become a superhero in comic book movies, and then before he succeeded, where he had like a mind power? No, which one was that? I don't know, but it was like one of the lower ones. If anybody, like Chris Evans, was like one of those guys who was like trying to be in like a comic movie, and then before he finally succeeded in being a comic, he failed a bunch of times. Wait, like Dakota Fanning was in it too, and like they all had like specific mind powers. Oh, why does that sound like vaguely familiar? Uh, like he, he, I think he could like move stuff with his mind and. She was psychic, and there was another one who could, like, kill people with her mind. Um, or control people. I don't know. And I tried to read the plot, and I'm like, this makes no sense. Oh, man. Oh, uh, Push. Yeah. Anyone right. remember that? It sounds, like, vaguely familiar, but, like, I think I've, like, read about it, but i never actually seen it. It's a 2009 American science fiction action thriller film directed by Paul McGreen and written by David Borla, starring Chris Evans, Dakota Fanning, Camilla Bell, and G-Men... So, Ooh. I mean, look, I, I, look, Chris Evans became a superhero eventually. It's fine, <laughs> and he's good at it. Yes, I love Chris Evans. If you want, if you guys ever want to be happy, look up like videos of Chris Evans with his dog. It's the greatest thing ever. Aww. Actually, I sent you one, didn't I? I've seen, I've seen this. I said I sent you the one where like it said after ten long weeks, yeah. and then his puppy just like ah, just love Chris Evans. But there's one, I just love Chris Evans. There's also one where he's doing like a push up challenge for something, and I the dog just kept getting in the way. I love Chris Evans. <laughs> he's adorable, and he looks really hot with a beard. Anyway, back to Orphan Black. All right, yep. Yeah. <laughs> back to Orphan Black. So that's what happens with uh, Kazima and. Um, Sarah said that she was going to meet with MK in person at Beth's apartment. MK 
doesn't show up because as she was um, researching and trying to, like, the contact, she found out that the person that was sent the, 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 the message she was sent to was Ferdinand, who she was actually looking for, and then gets really upset with Sarah. Yeah. About, we like, don't know why yet. Well, th- she's like, this was your contact. Like, you can't trust them. And she's like, look, I made a decision. Sometimes you need to work with people you don't like. And MK's like, no, you don't. And I'm like, yeah, you, you kind of do. Yeah, and, like, situations like that, yeah. You kind of do. And, and she's like, uh, no, bye. Like, nope, we're done. We're done. Packs it up. And Sarah goes back to Dizzy because, like, that's, again, that's, like, I feel bad for Dizzy, but, like, that's, she's the only one he's got. Like, yeah. And he's just, like, I got, and we, she said, he said, like, I want to know really what's going on. Yeah. And were you kind of, like, suspicious then or you weren't? No, he just seems like a chill dude. Like, he's and, like, and, like literally his reasoning is, just, like, look, I got people involved in this. I want to know. Yeah, like, yeah, he's got stakes. And so he tells her, and she tells him that it's clones, and then they uh, go try to find out where MK is. Because he's kind of been tracking her a bit. Uh-huh. So they find her house, a trailer thing, and they're about to go in, and she put a bomb underneath their house. Yeah, she's crazy. She's oh, yeah, she's like, crazy. Yeah, she'd be crazy and paranoid and puts a bomb under her doormat so people die when they enter. So then they start searching the house. Uh, meanwhile, Mrs. S gets a text from Sarah, mm-hmm. quote unquote, yeah. telling to, telling that says to tell Ferdinand to go meet him at Beth's apartment. Yes. Uh, but... Sarah did not send that text. It nope. was uh, MK. Yeah. And she has placed a bomb underneath the chair that Ferdinand sits in, and that if he gets up, it will explode. Yes. So that's not good. And then she kind of douses him in Well, no, 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 that's, that's, that's later. Later. We got to get to that. Yeah. But first, she, like, reveals, like, says, like, this is me, and then basically gives her super villain explanation. She she gets monologuing. While she's doing that, also. sly dog. Well, you what? caught me monologuing. What's that from? Incredibles. Right. My favorite movie. I still need to rewatch it. Rewatch it. Because I didn't like it when I first saw it. <gasps> I, that hurts me deep inside. I didn't like a lot of Pixar movies when I was younger. Pixar is so good, though. The only ones I liked were Toy Story and A Bug's Life, kind of, and Monsters, Inc. Nice. I really like But I did not enjoy The Incredibles when I first watched Incredibles it. Incredibles is an incredible you movie. You know what? I think it's like because they did that one trope in mo- superhero movies that I fucking hate which one the one where it's like everybody's just like super pissed off if you get a broken arm while the superhero is trying to save your life oh well like that's kind of like the point i know but it just pissed me off yeah but that's like the point no no well like now i get that and like i know i need to rewatch it because of that yeah like oh now i'm kind of like right, i kind of understand at some point i like when the one guy was like trying to kill himself yeah and was super upset and like trying to sue him and i'm just like i got s- you didn't save my life you ruined my death I know, and I think that was, like, I I get that that was, like, the point, and, like, you like you weren't supposed to take, you're supposed to be on the superhero side. Yeah. But at that point, I was just, like, so young and so mad. Oh, no. I know I'm wrong. Good, that's that's the point. Movie. I just never got around to rewatching it. watch it, yeah. Oh. And I heard The Incredibles 2 is good. It's very good. And Caleb was really worried, guys. I was so worried about that movie, but it was really good. I have a lot of words to say about it, though, in a good way, and also a critical way. Back to Orphan Black. Yeah, Orphan Black. So as uh, MK's monologuing, uh, Sarah's kind of like looking through her stuff just to like see if they can find uh, information about her and finds her with another uh, another clone who's got like blonde hair named Nikki. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically finds like uh, new serum clippings. One's about a car crash in Amsterdam. And if you remember, Sarah said, your heart accent sounded in Scandinavian. Yeah. And it says like the person who died was this uh, woman named Vera, mm-hmm. who's from, it was Helsinki. Yes. So. Helsinki. You learn that MK's whole thing and why she wants to kill Ferdinand is because of Helsinki. Yes. Because she was the one who survived and she got like a scar on her cheek. Yeah. And that her real name's Vera, by the way. Yes. And then she's another one about a fire, which was Nikki. Yeah. And, and not didn't just kill her, but her family, too. Well, that's the thing with Hel- what Helsinki was supposed to be and like what they were going to do in season three at the beginning, where they weren't yeah. just going to kill the clones, they were going to kill the entire family. Yeah. Like everyone who knew about it. So it's it's cool to see that come back. So because okay. that like wasn't really like that didn't wasn't really like a super explored thing. Like it was in like an episode or two, and then it just kind of fell off. Um, but this was like oh Helsinki, yep, yep, it it happened. Affected a lot of people. Uh, nine clones and thirty two people died. Yep, and uh, MK wants revenge on Ferdinand for that. And that's been like I think it was a thing like she was willing to help out until she found out about the the person that the contact, and then she was like yeah. nope. Well, it seems like her whole goal this whole time was to find this guy. Yeah. Yeah, because that's kind of like what she's been doing, working in the background, so. Mm-hmm. She does that and, like, finishes monologuing, and 
then she starts dousing him in gasoline mm-hmm. and is like gonna burn it all down and then Sarah realizing what's going on runs or like drives over and t- tells them or tries to stop MK from killing him mm-hmm. and then tells them about the bot and then what it actually does which is the DNA thing is saying like no we need yes. him yeah and then like, MK just like asks for his money or like gets like forces him to like, give him all her money. Yeah, he's like, I have a lot of money. She's like, I know. I found all your accounts. It's Put like in your password. Something. Yeah, and she then she transfers all of his money. And then she just kind of leaves. Her. And like that was kind of my thing. Like when I really wasn't sure what I felt about MK at that point. Yeah. Because I was like, so you would have just been okay with taking his money. That seems kind of. Well, she knew. And she well, she knew she was going to kill him too. But she was getting out of there before he could kill himself. Oh, that's so. true. So she was they like. Probably <laughs> Yeah, but then also I'm kind of like she's not even like willing to like connect with like her other clones or now or anything. No, she's pretty like she seems like everyone that she's gotten close to has died, so she's only interested in her own kind of ventures at this point. Yeah, that makes sense. That happened, and then Mrs. S comes and they get the bomb off, or they turn the bomb off, and that kind of thing. Because mm-hmm. I don't think that was like the exact exact end. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure what the exact end was. Oh, uh, the yeah. DVD, right? Yeah. So after they uh, free for it, we go back to Felix is at the rabbit hole with Cosima and they have the Brightborn DVD and they're watching it. And we see uh, Evie again, Evie Cho. Yes. If you remember from the first episode. Yep. Who is very obviously not a good dude. No, but she's talking about it. And she's basically like saying stuff. Stuff like fertility thing, like we'll help you out with that. And like you can actually like kind of create what kind of baby you want, kind of. Mm hmm. So that's a bit weird. Yeah. It's kind of. So. A little suspicious. You want to go with that? Uh, about like your feelings what? on like what like or like what? Oh. You know, like the whole like whatever her thing is. Yes. Yeah, I'm curious. I really want to know where this is going because I'm curious. I know it's not going to be good, but I want to know. You want to know? Yes, I do. That's about as far as I got. So yeah, well, it sounds like they're not just doing like fertility stuff and like. No, I that. think it sounds like well, like because my first reaction was like, is this like a cl- uh, like more clones? And I don't think that's the case. Just, like, logistically, I don't think that's the case. But, like, part of me is, like, more clones? Um, But it just seems like a weird, I don't know, eugenics thing. Eugenics is always fun. (laughs) Eugenics really takes the cake. Yep. And so that's the end of that episode. So what do you think of these two? Um, It was good. I think with that first episode, we kind of blew through that because it was like, all right. It was like, yeah. But I think a lot of happened in the second episode. So it's Good. A yeah. lot going on. I it's so weird that like the um the MK character, Vera Mika, whatever you want to call her. MK. MK. Um yeah, it's like I was so interested in her char- as in her as a character because she has a lot a lot of like weird little quirks and stuff. Um and she has kind of interesting past. And it was cool to see her past now, but like at the end you're like, Oh, okay, is she gone now? Are we done with her? Is she leave? Okay, bye. Okay, all right. I don't know how to feel about you now. See ya. Bye bye. So I'm kinda curious to see like how she's going to come, like, what her relevance to the plot is going to be if she was just in this for the first few episodes just to be like, all right, cool, um, just to do her own thing or, or what her importance is going to be mm-hmm. as we go on. So yeah. I'm kind of curious about that. But I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, I think comparing them to the, um, the like, the first, like, the, first, the season openers, um, it felt a bit, I'd say, like, a bit slow. Yeah. Slow, like, it slowed down the pace a bit. Yeah. But, like, it also seems like, all right, like, we're going to get back into it as soon as possible. Right. So, yeah, I don't have that much. I mean, I, I kind of, I don't have that much of an opinion. It's like, I had fun with them, but, like, I wasn't. Yeah. These, like, I feel like the, the first two episodes of the season really stood out. And these were, like, all right. They were, like, they weren't, they didn't keep up the momentum, but they kept things going at a good pace. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Want to do a comment? Yeah. Corner? All right. It's time for a comment corner. What's this one from? This is on a reaction from season three. Um, or episode seven, eight. Okay. This one's from Betty Caballero. I think I said that. I put a really big accent on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't believe today, June 10th, when this was posted, one year ago started the fifth and last season. God, I miss the clones so much. Well, then rewatch the show. Well, I think that's why they joined us, so they can rewatch it with us and have a good time. And see your beautiful face when something see, bad happens. My happened. lovely reactions when things go wrong or right or just all kinds of strange. So, yeah, but 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're joining us on this journey of rewatching the show. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss it when it's all over. But it's all about the journey, yes. not the destination. All right. And then we have another comment from Eddie Emmy, who comments on our videos a lot, which I appreciate. Thank you. This is from our um, Season 3, Ep 7 and 8 podcast review, where uh, they give a timestamp here, and they're talking about uh, Cosima's rebellion was solely because Delphine showed up at Shay's invading her space. Cosima was going to work just... Uh, get the specimen then. I think the whole thing was an excuse for the writers to get Cosima at the school for wacky hijinks. Yeah. But is that such a bad thing? I think that was part of it, but then also I think the thing, she might have been in like slight denial that like her sickness was coming back. I, yeah. for, I forget what we oh. said, but... Yeah, I know. We have to go back and listen to that. But, but I th- no, but denial, like, yeah. Yeah, and then like I agree that like that's why she's being like rebellious and stuff, but the fact of the matter is like there's points when you should not just be like a like a little like... I wouldn't say like kid about it. And yeah. Be like, no, I'm not going to follow. I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. Right. Like there's a point where you got to be like, I got to do this. Like I know that I don't want to have to interact with this person, but like in the end they're, they have to do their job and which is going to help me out mm-hmm. at this point. So yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. And that's all the comments I have. We didn't have a lot. So uh, guys leave comments and then we'll read them on the show. What more yeah, could so you possibly if you want? If you are uh, watching us on or you're listening to this on YouTube, please uh like us subscribe to the channel uh we've uh, we've gone past the 350 mark which is fun we're in the 360s now all right that's just very exciting yeah that took a while Ooh, we're in 364 we got two subscribers in the last like day all right keep it coming guys yeah thanks guys uh so subscribe uh leave a comment uh positive criticism whatever uh turn on notifications just to be safe yeah so then you really know when we're dropping those I videos say, i forgot to say this in the last episode we're on itunes too so. oh yeah like, i always forget itunes yeah, but it's good, though, because that's how you listen to us on the go. Yeah, so if we're, uh, we're on iTunes and other um, RSS feeds, that kind of thing. So if you want to listen to us there uh, and also uh, review and rate us would be and subscribe there would be lovely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash wittyclothes. So if you want to uh, like us there, leave a comment. Yeah. We're on Twitter at wittyclothes. Uh, so you can follow us there and leave a tweet at us, whatever. Yeah. Uh, if you want to help us grow the channel, uh, you can, uh, become a Patreon supporter Yeah, and, uh, we will actually, once we get enough, we will start doing the Patreon goal thing, like the, uh, Patreon only things. I think there's a couple that I knew, I knew, I know we're only going to do for pay- for Patreon. Right. Yeah. So, and like get exclusive stuff once again, once we get enough and also, uh, guys, if we reach $50, we'll start doing the lifetime movie podcast, which is something that we really want to do. Um, but we need your support to do it. We need to drink more wine. <laughs> we need to become ladies. <laughs> and what do ladies do? Uh, drink wine and bitch about stuff. And watch Lifetime. Yeah, true. And also, if you just want to email us, we have an email, uh, wittyclothes at gmail.com. So that's fun. If you just want to email us, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it mm-hmm. for this. So, um, and hopefully the live show stream will be up. The live, not the stream, but the, we doing a lot. We did a live show by the yeah. time this comes out. By the time this comes out, we'll then the live show, so hopefully that'll be up soon. Yeah, so you can listen to it if you weren't able to make it. And find out what we reviewed. Yeah, it'll be fun. So, uh, thanks guys, and uh, we'll see you next time on First Reaction Fan Reaction. Yes. Peace. Peace. Peace.